That night, back in the cabin in Arendelle, you were wrapped in a blanket, in your dressing gown, in your fluffiest pyjamas, sat in the armchair beside the hearth. It's not that cold, Axel mused, crouched down beside you as he prepped the fire. It is, you demanded, missing the warmth of the acre wood. I won't be able to sleep. Axel chuckled at your melodrama, then used his magic to light the logs in the hearth. I'll tuck you in with a few extra blankets, how's that? The idea of him tucking you in at all made your breath catch. You were willing to bet it would feel lovely, or safe and snug, but you weren't willing to admit that to yourself. No thanks, you stated flatly. Axel laughed again, used to your stubborn and standoffish behaviour. Then his eyes wandered to the clock on the mantelpiece. He still hadn't managed to breach the topic that he had to leave tonight, and soon. Part of him had worried that he would ruin your good mood. Part of him wondered if you would care at all. Hey, he said finally, knowing he couldn't hold it off any longer. He had to pack. He had no time left, really. You looked up from within your mounds of fluffy layers. The small, growing heart in his chest gave an affectionate twang. I've got another mission. When? You pulled the layers away from your upper body so you could interact with him properly. Fluff had been getting up your nose, and it was distracting. Axel looked at the clock inadvertently. Tomorrow. But I'll have to head out tonight. Oh, you were quiet. Axel couldn't tell what you were feeling from that single sound. Then, you asked more brightly, How long for this time? I don't know. He ruffled a hand through his long, spiked hair. Could be a couple of weeks. It's a big one. Oh, okay. You sounded happy enough. But you pulled yourself out from amongst the blankets. Then once you were untangled, you busied yourself in the kitchen area, making yourself a hot drink. That was odd. He hadn't known what to expect, but your reaction was underwhelming. Axel felt silly for expecting a grander gesture, like you might actually miss him. The truth was, you were going to miss him, and you had no way to deny the fact from yourself. The moment he had said he might be gone for two weeks, your heart had clenched in an uncomfortable, restricting way. To distract yourself, you had got up to make a drink. But try as you might, the tension inside you wasn't fading. Two weeks was a long time. You hadn't been separated from him that long before. You didn't know what he would be up to on his mission. It could be dangerous. It might take longer than two weeks. He might get hurt. He might not come back. Suddenly, the frivolity of denying your feelings was too great to ignore. Axel, I... You turned to face him, cup of tea in hand. He looked curiously at you, but you stopped dead, unable to say the next part. Your heart clenched in a different way, like the light was forcing its way out of you, but the darkness was trying hard to contain it. It was a conflict you found yourself in a lot these days. It only happened when you thought about Axel, and how happy you were when you were with him, and how safe you felt, and how you had once told yourself you would never dare to feel this way again. Axel could feel the conflict inside you. He knew you were struggling, but it wasn't something he could help with. In fact, he knew he could make it much worse if he tried to intervene, so he had to watch you suffer inside your own head, inside your own heart, watching with a smile on his face as he waited for you to speak again like nothing was wrong. Then, suddenly, you did. You spoke your words slowly as if carefully deciding on each one before it left your mouth, and your cheeks were stained pink with the flush of embarrassment and uncertainty. I'll miss you. Axel felt his heart double in size, 
with the wind knocked out of him. He had seen you truly happy before, but this was the first time ever, ever, he had seen you vulnerable. You were more nervous than he thought was possible for you. He could feel you bearing your delicate, fragile heart to him. There was no darkness holding it, no armor to protect it. If he wanted to, he could kill you. For the first time, he felt how weak your light was. One hit, one more heartbreak, and it would end you. You had dared to trust him with your most vulnerable part, and his response had the potential to kill you. His throat clogged. That was a lot of responsibility. One word or action in the wrong manner, and he might have a heartless on his hands, and you gone forever. Well, he had been disappointed by your lack of a grand gesture earlier. He wasn't disappointed now. Pulling himself up from the hearth, he pushed the mounds of blankets off the armchair, then sat in it. Then, he looked at you. Come here. His tone was soft and welcoming. He held his arms out, inviting you towards him. It was a gamble that he was ready to make. You hesitated. This felt like a big risk. The closer you felt to him, the harder it would be to protect yourself if he hurt you in the end. Yet, somehow, you still felt safe, even knowing the risks. With your cheeks stained pink, you put your drink down, then shuffled towards Axel in your pyjamas and dressing gown. The fire was lit, and the room was undeniably warmer, so you shed the dressing gown, leaving it draped over the couch. Axel would be enough to warm you, anyway. Neither of you spoke as you gingerly walked between his arms, then settled down into his lap, your legs over his thighs, with your head just shy of leaning against Axel's neck. Your cheeks felt hot, but they felt even hotter when Axel wrapped his arms around you, one around your back, his gloved hand holding your waist, and the other against your thighs to hold you in place. He waited until you were comfortable. You were pretty rigid at first, but after a little while of resting against him, you finally relaxed, daring to snuggle in closer to him. In turn, he smiled, holding you tighter. Then, he offered you the assurance you were desperate to hear. I'll miss you too. When he turned his head to look at you, he noticed just how close you were. He had never seen your eyes this closely before. They were large and nervous, but so beautiful. He held in his impulse to bridge the gap and kiss you, knowing he would overstep a boundary. So instead, he rested his forehead to the side of yours, drawing circles on your thigh, even though you couldn't feel it for the mounds of thick pyjama fluff in the way. I'll be back ASAP. I know it's got to be hard for you being cooped up in here. I'll bring back some stuff to keep you entertained the next time I have to go away, okay? Okay, you said softly, enjoying the warmth of Axel's body as he held you tight. You weren't afraid. You didn't feel in danger. You were truly, genuinely happy in this moment. You knew Axel had to leave, but for now you were content. Somewhere down the line, you had let your feelings for Axel grow too much for you to stop them. Until this moment, you had feared he would hurt you someday. But right now, those worries felt trivial. You had never felt more loved. You spent a long time together, comfortable in each other's company, until finally you started to nod off. It was late and Axel had spent too much time here already. He had to head off to headquarters. He regretted having to leave you, what with this monumental discovery that you were happy to be close to him and comfortable enough to actually fall asleep on him, but he couldn't deny he had a job to do. Hey, 
trouble? He said softly, trying to stir you. I know you're comfortable, but I've got to get going. You roused yourself, blinking slowly as the night weighed heavily on your eyelids. He sounded genuinely apologetic, which was rare for the sarcastic redhead. Mm. You made a disapproving sound, but then you noticed what you were doing too caught in the trance of sleep and comfort, and woke yourself up as best you could, mumbling, Fine. You didn't sound particularly convincing. Axel felt guilty having to leave you. There was nothing he could do about it. Making the most of the few moments more he had with you, he picked you up in his arms, then got up from the armchair, holding you close as he walked through to your bedroom. Try getting some sleep he said before lowering you onto the bed. He pulled the covers up to your chin and tucked you in, pushing the duvet just under your body on either side so you felt like you were wrapped in a cocoon. Kneeling beside the bed, he stroked a loose strand of hair away from your forehead, gazing at you with an expression you had long forgotten. His green eyes regarded you with such affection and such gentleness it made it all the harder to let him go. His mollycoddling wasn't helping either. He was making you feel like the most precious thing in the world. You didn't want him to leave, not knowing when he would be back. Afraid he might not make it back. Axel stayed for as long as he could. Then when he was certain he was already late to start preparations for his mission, he finally stood up and headed for the door. Be back soon. He knew you didn't really want him to leave. He was going to get the mission wrapped up as quickly as possible. No dawdling about this time sightseeing. Only, as he made for the door, you spoke in a rushed, uncertain voice. Don't go! With his hand on the bedroom door, he looked back at you. He felt his heart tug. What do you mean? You sat up undoing his tucking in so you could pull back the duvet to expose the empty side of the bed. Just stay, please. Just for tonight. Just... with me. Suddenly, mountains of preparations weren't important. He could rush it. Tomorrow. There was no way he was going to leave you now. This was the first night since arriving months ago that you had asked him to stay. Not only were you asking him to stay, but to stay beside you. You had never trusted him enough to let him sleep next to you, even in a bed that was so big the two of you never had to touch. Until tonight. Until now. I'll stay. He closed the door. He slipped off his cloak and hung it up, took off his gloves, then climbed into the bed beside you, pulling the duvet up over you both. You were shocked that he had agreed to your selfish request. You couldn't hide the surprise. You knew he had to leave tomorrow, but just for tonight, just for now, you weren't ready to part with him. Axel reached out and took your hand, holding it as the two of you settled down to sleep. He loved this feeling. He loved that you wanted him close, he was contented, holding your hand. Anything more might feel intrusive or too much. He knew that, but this was enough. His heart nearly jumped out of his chest when you wriggled yourself closer to him. It wasn't by accident, like you were rolling over to scratch an itch. You shuffled forwards, rolling over so that your back was towards him, then scooted closer until your back was against his chest. Instantly, he wrapped his arms around your waist, pulling you against him in a tight hug. You squeaked, surprised, but didn't try to stop him. His embrace, his warmth, you were enjoying them too much. The two of you stayed snuggled together, neither of you falling asleep. It was a surreal experience for the both of you. Neither of you had felt like this in a long, long time. Not since your childhood, and not since before his time in the organization. Axel had stolen you on a whim, 
Sorry, not stolen. Rescued you. Neither of you were willing to admit it had been a kidnapping. He hadn't expected events to play out like they had, and had never expected to find someone who he felt so strongly about. Yet here he was, playing Big Spoon to a young woman who made his chest ache at the thought of abandoning her for a couple of weeks. He didn't know how he, a nobody, had gotten so lucky. You were special to him, and he hoped, truly hoped, that he was special to you. When he was certain he couldn't stay awake any longer, he had to slide away from you and roll over. You protested, and he didn't actually want to let you go, but he was aware of what might happen in the morning should he wake up holding onto an adorable woman with her body nestled incredibly close into him. He had only just gained your trust. He didn't want something like that scaring you off. You groaned in protest, missing his warmth around you, but you were close to nodding off yourself. Bleary-eyed, you rolled over and scooted towards him again. Only this time, you wrapped your arms across his waist. Okay, Axel thought. He could live with this. Tomorrow, he would be gone. But tonight, there were just the two of you, cosy in bed, forgetting how the world had been before the two of you met. <laughs>